what we got from our SMC family inshallah online. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa ta'ala. Is there a correlation between opening our wave reality and our ability to fight in the unseen world? Uh, we talked about that last night. <coughs> Go the reverse way. Do you have any possibility to fight the unseen world with your particle existence? Those are the funny sci-fi movies. where they're going to fight unseen things and they bring a physical weapon. You know, what you're going to swing your weapon where? On, onto what? Something that you don't see and that not in your dimension. And the only weapon that you can swing is iron. So ancient was iron swords. Then we watched a movie because shaitan always has to make his disclosure. Shaitan made a movie about these jinns. And the uh, jinn were telling the people that uh, this thing in your hand, we don't like it. And they said, what is this? He said, it's iron. We don't like iron. But he didn't say why he didn't like iron. But spiritual teaching tells you that iron in the hand of insan, of humanity, it glows with a fire. This is God's ni'mat. He sent us onto this earth with tools. Allah knows His creations. Uh, there's some things you don't see. But uh, if you hold this metal, they're going to have trouble. So they used to make their swords of iron and when they wield it or yield it, I don't know the, the, the English of it, <laughs> wield it, they swing it, that's a light that burns them. So but back to the reality is that if, if the danger are in these wave creations, energy creations. They enter into you, someone says you've got cancer because now your cells are dying. What does that mean your, your, your cells are dying? Something has attached itself and depleting you and you feel like your, your battery is going, the life of, of your system is going. Well you don't need to think so much, look at what happens with a piece of bread if you leave it out. You look and again people who train themselves to start squinting and looking, you see a wavy energy field around food that is rotting or turning green because they're all coming to pull the energy out of something. And if those energy fields that are waves enter into your body… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Stay within the body, you call them microbes, micro orbs. They're micro, smaller organizations or, 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 or organ, I don't know what's the word for it, smaller things that you don't see. Again, this is their energy world. So these sciences, what you learn from your school, alhamdulillah you got a good grade in it and you, you use it but you apply your spiritual teaching to it. That okay I'll say what they say but at the same time I should understand these are parasites. And that people need to be treated with things that, that come against parasites. And that people have to understand to bring their resonance up. So then I'll teach these people to sit and to breathe and to visualize an energy field because you have to see the energy field. They don't believe in the shaykh so you can't say, oh please connect your heart with my shaykh. But say, I want you to see an energy field and in that energy field is God's grace. And I want you to push away negativity, I want you to breathe in positivity and there's a chant that's a very ancient chant called Hu and just keep breathing Hu to heal yourself and bring your resonance up. And then the student is the mirror of the shaykh. 
that every time they come into the presence of, of that individual, that individual is the replica of the shaykh. So they get recharged in that presence. That becomes the hikmah of why then these students are all in different fields because they are mirroring the shaykh wherever they are as long as they incorporate the teaching. But if you keep the teaching separate and your life separate then what was the value? It's like a shaykh who became a shaykh but said, I'm never going to propagate what I learned but I just keep my shaykhness for myself. So Allah brought us in and we think to ourselves, well Allah guided me to this. Well because in the last days your, your application of these teachings in your field are going to have a significant benefit. And that's true in every field, right? So when programmers learn tariqah they go and talk to other programmers. Oh yeah binary code, this is the Mashaykh's teaching about this and about this. And most of the hardcore programmers say, I experience everything you've talked about. I experience the demonic presence in their systems, in their computer systems, in their AI systems and the, the danger of the release of their quantum computers and the whole binary system they understood it. So it's, a, it's something that is very much a fact for people whom are in that world and in that understanding. So Allah guided us all not to keep what we learn for ourselves. But how do I apply it in my everyday life? InshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum Salaam Wa Alaykum Is there a relationship between the teachings on the wave uh, and particle and the CERN particle accelerator? Hmm. Yeah, exactly that. They understand the energy, they understand the energy fields, they're trying to smash the particles and bring out what is a, a secret within them and which they call the God particle. They want to go back to a particle that they believe will bring about uh, the origin and secrets of the origin, ah it's all rubbish. That's not what they're trying to do. They're trying to make an energy field to open up portals. So anytime you move energy we said before, just, just now in the, in the talk everything is an energy field. So your neurosystem is an entire system. I can walk into your presence and affect, literally affect your neurosystem. So if a negative person comes into your life or you go somewhere somebody's hurt, been some negativity, why psychiatrists have the highest suicide rate? Because they're continuously in the field of very depressed people. A lot of people who work with the troubled children, troubled people, what happens? They're in the direct field of this type of difficulty. If your practices are not strong, your understanding of wudu is not strong, you didn't use the tools the shaykh gave you, why did the shaykh give you taweezes? Because we know that this field, we know that you have to have a protection for this field. There are many things affecting and we want heavenly support in the battle of these energies and in the effect of these energies. So and then now comes into play, oh the, the, the taweezes. What are the taweezes doing in the home as far as bringing in positive Divinely energies to fight and combat all the negative frequencies that are coming? So everything, everything is uh, immensely related. They're moving waves at a very high rate of speed, opening a door and bringing creatures through. They can't tell people that's what they're doing but this is the purpose of you know any type of energy movement for the purposes that they're trying to do is trying to, to bring about uh, changes in energy fields. They say many times the things they do affect in the sky, things are happening. So definitely these are, these are the uh, times in which people are believing in energy, using energy, weaponizing energy. And the, the greatest power of energy is the heavens, the untapped energy fields. So everything that shaitan does and negative uh, creatures do, they don't have access to the heavens. Everything is a manipulation of the electromagnetic field, the lowest field of energy on our existence, not heavenly fields.
ان شاء الله السلام عليكم سيدي وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله When we change ourselves, does our DNA change as well? And does that mean that Allah changes the destiny within the all-encompassing book that is stored in our DNA? That we can't speak to that, what, what changes in the DNA because we don't know what the DNA had. So I don't think anything you do surprises Allah. So that question makes it sound like you did something that Allah didn't know you were going to do. Therefore now your DNA has to be changed. Since you don't read the book that what Allah wrote, it's already been written in there. Whatever you're going to achieve of life, it has to be written by Allah Whatever station you're going to achieve has to be preordained upon the servant. Remember this is a different belief, people coming from different beliefs don't understand this reality. That the Prophets were not chosen by walking on the earth. Or God looked at them and said, okay, you're a good one, I will now make you a prophet. These are ancient souls, saints, ancient souls. All of us have a written destiny. وَعَلَّمَ Quran. Allah says in Holy Qur'an, I taught you the Qur'an and then خَلَقَ insan. Means what? Every soul has the Qur'an. عَلَمَ Quran. رَبِّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَرَبِّ الْكَافِرِينَ Rabbil Alameen. There's nobody outside of Allah's creation. Every soul has been given the Qur'an. But then Khalaq al-Insan created their form and the form became a renegade. But everything is written upon the person. So the people whom reach their destinies through their writing from Allah that they're to reach it, then they have been given a tremendous gift. That's why we say everything is a, is a gift from God Almighty. So we owe everything to Allah that He guided us. It's not our choosing, it's not our cleverness, it's God's gift and grant. Now what's my responsibility for this gift and grant is I have to go back and give it back to people. Because I also should feel ashamed that why I got it and other creatures didn't get it. So you have to take care of your brother. If there's five of you and Allah created only five of you, then you would all five be brothers. How could God give you hundred dollars and your four brothers nothing and you just get up and walk away? It's not that because we're all family, we're all the family of Adam and Eve. He gave you the hundred to give each of the brothers a hundred or portion of that so that everybody ate and we are responsible to take care of each other. So it's not one got something and ran away, this is a crookedness. Islam and taslim is submission. So if God gave it to me, my responsibility in receiving it, I should have partitioned it equally for them and they're all entitled to it. And we are the caretakers of one another. That's why it's if we've been guided, the responsibility of guidance is not something small. That's why Islamic belief is everyone is, is required religiously to do da'wah. And after the end of our da'wah we say, Alhamdulillah and we pass away. But we have to have what we received, we have to give back to people. Not by force but by love and by good example. So the people see, you know everything was, was going very beautific. People were seeing the amount of horrific torment on people, how much they had patience, how much they were praying in the midst of all the rubble. And then they start putting these ridiculous things all over their head yelling and screaming and, uh, and destroyed the whole image. So which one was from Rahman, which one was from Shaitan? Shaitan is the one always on the streets yelling and screaming. But from Rahman there's no yelling and screaming like that. That the people whom submit to the will of Allah however harsh it is, these are very high stations and saintly realities. As a result of the world seeing that, they were coming in droves into Islam. Saying, we've never seen a people like this in our lives. That through their suffering they get up and they call uh, azan and pray. Here if you don't get your chocolate on a timely manner you come against God. Oh I didn't get what I wanted, I'm not interested anymore. And this is a, a despised characteristic. Well you don't get what you want so I'm not coming anymore. Don't come, who cares? 
We said before there's thousand more waiting to sit and to, to reach their reality, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Can the Sultan of Dhikr be only achieved in our wave reality? I don't know, first try to just do the dhikr before you think you're going to reach the Sultan of Dhikr. My goodness, this is, this is above the Sultan al awliya who came up with that? Let's come back to earth please. <laughs> just nice sort of humble people, I wish I could do my dhikr, I, I make my istighfar and all these things, so these, these things we have to. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh how do we shield our and protect ourselves uh, with the sunnah if the workplace or an environment we're in doesn't allow for certain items? Due to the items that you have, remember everything has been written, Allah wrote for you that workplace. So you, you can't do more than what Allah gave to you, if Allah gave you one foot and you have to do something then He already wrote that you only have one foot. So it means everybody's going to have a handicap, everybody's going to have a difficulty, everybody's going to have some sort of testing. Allah didn't write anything to be 100% perfect and uh, everything to be so easy. It's exactly that struggle that's important. You wear the sunnah that you can, you do the practices you can, you keep the wudu that you can, you keep the prayers on the time that you have to and you make accommodation for everything. They say you can't pray in the workplace, of course you can, go sit on a bench and pray. But if you want to call takbir in the middle of the office and uh, put your feet in all of their sinks and, and make a problem for everybody, no. We've seen people like that, they have to insist on putting their feet and toes into everybody's sink and uh, this is ridiculous. We went uh, to all the awliya of Sham sharif and they were khuf. And uh, the khuf, its regulation is you should have showered uh, in the morning, washed everything complete, you put your khuf on and now all you're responsible is for wiping. And you don't put the khuf in the sink, you just take the water with your hand and wipe. So if you follow awliya you would understand they don't have to do those things. And you don't, you don't make a difficulty to be seen by people, you pray in your chair. So everything is, is accomplishable. You do your zikr silently, it's never shown to anyone anyways. So what in the workplace is not allowed? Everything is allowed but people want to make a show of it. So you go s s silently somewhere, you wash, you sit on a chair, you pray, you in your heart you make your zikr, tasbeet shouldn't be seen by anyone anyways because you don't want to give the impression that you're overly pious and you're special and people have to come up and ask you please, oh pray for me too and you don't want attention. So the tariqah way is very different than the external people and how everything for them is a show and in the middle of the train they want to pull out their carpet, throw it on, 10,000 people have to sit and watch them pray. It's just based of uh, showing off and, and uh, horrible energies in showing off like that. The, the believers and the servants of Allah try to keep themselves to be hidden and uh, not to take the nazar and the eyes of people, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Thank you for your eye-opening talk today. Is the TV a demonic wave portal and how is music weaponized? Is one genre more harmful than the other? Oh, you tell me. <laughs> is that from you, Hajj Jibreel? <laughs> for real? That really you wrote that? <laughs> You're going to be texting. And it was good. What was the first part of that? The wave reality? Is the TV a demonic wave portal? Sure, it's one eye guy. The whole world taking their knowledge from the one eye. And now look at uh, a, a religion and a people whom have so much harmony with each other, they are demonized by this one eye. So the history of, of mankind, go back into the Muslim world. In the history of mankind all faiths are safe with Islam, all faiths loving and, and nourishing and they take care of the people of the book, they have respect for everything. This was a history 
So how that history is completely destroyed by this one eye shaitan? Because it makes good news, makes good revenue, makes good advertising. We live in a system in which marketing and excitement are interconnected. Everything has to be excited. You know when they make people to panic, they have scientific studies that people buy more. They feel nervous, they say, I, I should go and experience something, I'll eat something I won't, I'll eat some chocolates I wasn't going to eat, look like everything is going to be ending anyways. So they found out the more they create panic, the more people are buying and spending. So that's not the history of Islam. The history of Islam is no, they've lived peacefully and shared knowledges and, and communities and everything. And they repeat and they tell their, their histories that how many times these people have been saved in Islamic nations, safeguarded in Islamic nations and respected in Islamic nations. In Jerusalem alone the Muslims are the custodians of the church. They hold the key of the Holy, Septic, the Holy Scepter's church. The most sacred site for the people of Sayyidina Isa of the Christian faith, it's key to their doors held by Muslims to safeguard it. So this is the history of Islam, the real history of Islam is based on love and, and common respect and the respect and Allah says throughout the Qur'an, so anyone who following the Qur'an then Allah tells them, don't speak a harsh word to them and leave them to their faith and you to your faith and you to your practices, that's it. Don't speak a harsh word, least they say a harsh word against what you believe. This was the history and the reality of what Prophet brought. But we're in Dajjal times and the jinn love to fight and they make everything to be upside down and everything that is true is false, everything false is true. So this is the difficulty. The genre of music and sound of course we described, we, we, we speak a language that now based on cursing. You, you say hello to people so you put them for hell. So what kind of energy does that have? So, oh we went into that whole etymology of words. So the, yes, everything is based on energy, everything is based on bringing energy down. If you listen to Qur'an that genre of sound will energize you. Listen to holy salawats will energize you. So they say, oh is music haram? Say, music we have to define. So hamd and praise? No, how could hamd and praise ever be something forbidden? But when they say music, yes music is forbidden. Music that make your heart agitated, music that uh, darkens your ears, your heart, your very existence, your heart begin to palpitate. Of course it's haram because it takes you away from the belief of Allah and brings agitation into your heart. If Allah resides within your heart then how to listen to something that is continuously cursing, every other word of cursing coming into your ears, coming into your heart and making your entire soul to shaykh, shake. What happens then? What does haram mean? Means that it's a forbidden action that takes you away from your belief, it doesn't enlighten your belief. Then listen to something beatific, something classical, something that brings tears to your eyes, something melodious about Divinely Lights and you're crying. So how could that be haram? No, it brought you near to Allah So it's very commonsensical. Anything you think is taking you away from tranquility and peace within your heart, why Allah wants you to do that? So all of these, all of these are, they can be found in common sense. So we are to raise our energy or lower our energy. Our life is to raise the energy inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Would reciting our arads on water, especially within the copper canisters from SMC for example, help us with stomach issues and parasites and anxieties? Inshallah reciting on water on whatever you have it should help us with healing because water is angelic. So as soon as we recite Qur'an and salawat and du'a upon water, the water are angels and they say, Ameen, 
Whatever we're asking of goodness, the angels say, Ameen and the water is blessed. You recite the 40 Surah Fatiha and take away addiction to smoking. <coughs> All of our recitations are to be based on water and ta'am and food, sugar, all of these healing salts. As a result this becomes an immense healing so that people are ingesting and being healed with these realities. Now copper they found out it's antimicrobial, antibacterial, why did they take it away? Why did they take away cotton and you know linens? It used to be called linens, means all your sheets were from linen. So when you go to the doctor it was a, a cotton mattress with linen sheets for healing. Now they put you on a plastic bed with polyester sheets so that you die. There's no healing on a plastic bed. You, you, people you see them sweat and they get horrible sores, there's no healing, they're actually going the reverse direction. So why did the homes of people have pipe, pop, copper pipes? Why? Because as the water was flowing it would kill the bacteria, there would be no sludge. Now everything is a plastic pipe which filled with black sludge. So that the water actually coming out the tap is, is, is black sludge. Then they say, oh the pipes they leak in copper, no, no it's not true. You go back a hundred years the homes are all in copper and then the billionaires they build their home only copper pipes. They put everybody else plastic and they build for themselves copper. They said that if they made the counters in hospitals where they do the medical exams and tests, if they made it copper they sound no bacteria would grow on it, within 10 seconds bacteria dies. They make stainless steel, this is there for three days. So one person, the next person comes, the bacteria of that person jumps on that person. So people actually get sicker in these facilities where they know that if they put copper and introduce copper it would be healing. So back in traditional companies, they, in countries they only cook with copper, drink with copper. Uh, SMC is just trying to bring it back but they have copper bowls, they have copper canisters, they have co copper cooking pots because this was a, a metal in which to use for healing and uh, protect ourselves from viruses and infections. The energy that you're trying to accumulate in your body is based on what? The copper in your brain. Your brain actually is the largest recipient of copper and your entire energy system that flows on the alif of your back is based on the copper within your head. So it's bringing an energy and it's being magnified in the copper. So yeah, no, we are very energy being and these are, these are deep energy realities. So the use of copper upon themselves and especially before they would go into battle, they had special armaments because these were shields and energy protections. So inshaAllah we get back to that state in which People understand the importance of energy, the Im importance of the use of energies and uh, more iron, when they have iron around them nefarious creatures are not pleased with that and they're more weary of that. So they would used to cook with, with iron also for campfires and… Cast iron. Cast iron, yeah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Ramatullah With the earth of Imam Jafar as Sadiq Alayhi Salaam salam. at the end of this month, uh -huh. what can we learn from his holy wave of reality? Exactly what we thought this weekend. This is from his immense barakah and blessings that uh, we, we, we inshaAllah have uh, immense love for Imam Jafar as Sadiq and uh, carry a secret from Imam Jafar as Sadiq as Salaam and his name is Jafar Sadiq. So, alhamdulillah. This is the, the barakah of that weekend, uh, this weekend and all these wave realities and knowledges and, and all of that is uh, from their holy hearts. So the love for the Ahlul Bayt and holy companions, we're the recipients of all of that. So when we talk about the cane and Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq people say, wow what is this, we never heard this. I say, yeah because you probably don't have the love that we have for Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq so he didn't tell you, sorry. 
what can you do? So this is, this is the, the fruits of that love, right? So when we're teaching people to love, love, love and they go give thousands of pounds of food in His name, you don't think He's happy with all of us? Sure. So he says, okay, the treasure then I will give to you this weekend, these treasures, these knowledges, these realities and this is a, a gift of love. So when you love these holy people, their gifts are immense blessings throughout your entire existence and life. Everything is due to them. So if you want to know about them, tune in and listen to all these teachings. It's from their hearts and their love and their secrets. So you're not hearing this from anyone else. So this is not from our books and our, from something we cleverly brought up but these are from their inspirations. The books that we've put together are from their, their ancient teachings for the last days and, and for the preparation of the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi and to, to bring people back to a state of hope and love and kindness and good character. We are the least feared people. 2,000, 3,000 videos and 20 years of broadcasting all about good character, love, patience and uh, bringing people together towards their reality. And uh, the only people who don't like us are the devils, like real devils that are based on negative energy, fighting and hatred. So when you don't have that element they're very upset with you. But if you have the good character and love then Allah should be happy inshaAllah. So everything is based on seeking Allah's satisfaction and the satisfaction of all the Prophets of the Divine that they be happy with us and respect for their communities, their books, their teachings and that the love and respect for Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bihurmati Muhammad al Mustafa, Basir Surat al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago. Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.